There we go. Breaking it towards me. That's real smart. Oh, oh yeah. All right, guys, today we're talking about Thermax PEI filament made from Ultim 1010, which is really just Ultim 1010. It's the same resin from Sabic, just extruded here in the USA, also known as polyether imid, a high performance polymer designed to withstand extreme environmental factors like heat, chemicals, and flame. It's used in many industries like aerospace, automotive, and medical. This is a super tough filament, which can be used for anything from microwavable tableware to surgical tools. Tools. So here's the box and the spool. You'll get into it when you order it off visionminer.com. It'll basically look like this. It's nicely wrapped inside of some very thick plastic. It's very good. You just do still have to dry it even when it's brand new, but uh, yeah, made in USA. Very, very good stuff. Very high quality standards always from 3DX Tech. So let's talk about where you're actually gonna see this material used in the industries. In the food and beverage industry, obviously tableware and Tupperware, because it can be microwaved, and it's also known to maintain its properties after over a thousand cycles in an industrial washing machine with detergents. In the medical industry, you'll see it used for tools, medical device enclosures, testing parts, and testing machines, primarily because it can withstand various sterilization methods uh, and more on that in just a moment. So, what kind of machine do you need to print this filament? First of all, your nozzle needs to be able to go up to 370 to 390 C, even up to 400. Your bed temperature needs to go from 120 to 160 or higher for adhesive on the bed. Our nanopolymer adhesive works fantastic. And in the chamber, you're going to need a heated chamber from 70 Celsius at the bottom end up to 180 Celsius or even higher. It's really important because this stuff loves to warp and curl. And as far as drying goes, yes, you do need to dry this plastic like every plastic it needs to be dried thoroughly before processing which is really just the fancy word for melting uh, in regards to drying we do have an entire kit available on our site including the vacuum chamber and ovens and that's basically all you need so we put together stuff we use at our shop so that you can do it just as easily as us and we also made metal spools as you can see here because a lot of these come on polymer spools which will melt at super high fast drying temperatures so, by the way, if you're enjoying this breakdown, go ahead and hit that like and subscribe. It lets us know that this content is valuable to you and we've got a lot more coming. So, let's talk about the basic material specifications. Ultim 1010 is an amorphous material, meaning it does not form a crystalline structure when it cools down. And that also aids in the annealing of the parts because it can be annealed for additional strength most of the time. Now the heat deflection temperature is around 217 Celsius, meaning you can use it in applications up to that temperature without losing mechanical properties. Pretty much nothing will happen. Its glass transition point is also 217 Celsius and its actual melting point where it turns from full solid to full liquid over that glass transition thing, it's amorphous, whatever, but it melts around 337 Celsius. Keep in mind, it extrudes much higher than that, so you gotta have a machine that's capable. Now, let's get into some basic strength specifications. For tensile strength, you get around 56 MPa on the ISO 527 standard, which is not to be confused with the 2800 MPa on the ASTM D638 standard, but keep in mind, the way your part is designed and the orientation at which it's printed will have a dramatic effect on strength. You'll always lose a certain percentage in the Z-axis depending how the part is printed. Now, all the data sheets are available on our online store at visionminer.com data so you can find the tensile modulus, elongation, impact strength, and all that juicy stuff right there on the site. But first, let's talk about some specific environmental factors. If you're doing UV heavy applications, uh, it's very, very stable. It's very good. So if you're putting it outdoors in the sun for years on and rest easy, it will survive. Now, as far as hydrolytic resistance goes, Ultim 1010 does not absorb a lot of moisture after printing and it doesn't break down when it comes in contact with water. So you can actually use this filament under water and it won't break down over time. As far as chemical resistance goes, in general, it's extremely good. For alcohols, it's good. Acetone, it's good. Chlorine, sulfuric acid, and hydrochloric acid, all good. Uh, Ultimate 1010 will not actually work with certain chemicals like toluene, benzene, and xylene. So if you happen to be working with those, we probably do have some other materials that will work. Check out our website, visionminer.com materials. 
Now, Ultra 1010 is a great choice for applications involving aliphatic hydrocarbons, which are very common in automotive and transportation industries. So if you're making something for your car, this might be a really good choice. But next, let's talk about some electrical properties. This is an insulative material with a dielectric constant of 2.67 and a dissipation factor of 0.001. Ultim 1010 is compatible with UL file 75735, which certifies Ultim 1010 as a safe insulator for components up to 600 volts. It's a very good insulator. Next, we've got biocompatibility, certifications, and sterilization. Now, the certified grade is biocompatible and approved for food contact with the NSF 51. It's food contact safe and can be used in contact with any kinds of food products that is approved by the FDA and EU food compliance standards. It's also ISO 10993 USP Class 6 certified for contact with the human body and can even be implanted. Now, that is the certified grade, so if you need that, let us know. We can get that for you. You can also sterilize Ultim 1010 in a lot of different ways, from steam to ETO gas to gamma radiation, autoclaving, and of course, dry heat. So now let's check out some example parts. What have we done with this stuff over the years? Man, uh, well, I mean, first and foremost, baby Yoda. You know, can't really beat it. Anyway, let's, let, in all seriousness, we've got some jig fixture things for different types of manufacturing. So there's really a few parts that we printed in every single material. If you wanna check out our other videos, you can see all the cross comparisons. But this was one of the main ones. It's an electronics enclosure. And we actually printed this in numerous orientations to do an actual case study on how it prints in different orientations. Keep an, eye, keep an eye out for that video. If you're not already subscribed, definitely hit that like button and subscribe. We're gonna have that one out soon. It'll be very, very cool. Uh, we've also got some sort of housing, some sort of pipe fittings, uh, some different things. Like, honestly, most of the stuff that we print that comes out of this stuff is under NDA, and I don't even know what it is. It's all in science and technology and manufacturing. So usually it's like, what the heck is this thing? Uh, obviously, we've got the obligatory Benchy, which as you can observe and love, it's a beautiful Benchy. It does print very nice. By the way, all of these were printed on the Funmat HT by Intamsis, which is a $7,500 best bang for the buck on the market printer for high temp and closed chamber. Really good stuff. Check that out. Uh, we got a ton of videos on it as well. So support me, support it here in the US. So if you're looking at printing this stuff, that's a great way to go. Um, man, we've got tons of little parts. We even did this really, really thick sample bar, which turned out much better than expected considering how much this stuff warps on the build plate. I did not expect this to work. It does have a little bit of curling up there at the bottom, but uh, man, I tell you, this stuff is crazy. Uh, we've also got some vases, some vases, so we wanted to sort of show you the surface quality of each material. So we've got big comparisons, and uh, it came out very, very nice. And yeah, even did a star pattern one. So you can really see what it comes out looking like. Now, this particular part, I'm actually gonna break for you here. We got a few parts we're gonna break. So let's get into that. Okay, so we've got a couple little sample bars that we actually have. If you're seriously considering this material and you need to test it in your solvent, your acid, or your temperature, or whatever it is, you can request these from us specifically. But for now, I'm just gonna show you what it takes to break one in a vise. Then we're gonna burn it using the fume extractor here, of course, safety first. And uh, yeah, let's check it out. So, safety first, guys. Always wear your safety glasses when you're dealing with explosive Parts. This, uh, this is a relatively brittle filament. Uh, brittle being it won't bend, it'll actually shatter before anything else. So let's lock this puppy down. I'm just gonna put it right about there in this vise and uh, let's break it. Here we go, breaking it towards me. That's real smart. Oh, oh yeah. Where'd it go? It exploded. It literally exploded. Wow, look at that. All right, let's check out the break, because that's what we really want to see, is how's the layer adhesion? It looks very, very good. It's got some shattering here on this inside, but we had great layer adhesion. You can actually see through this. It's actually kind of translucent. Very nice. 
Very, very nice. Where'd that other half go? I was gonna burn that. Anyway, uh, now let's just take this vase, and I know it's, it's beautiful, but we're gonna break it because science. So, you know, we're just normal dudes here in a shop slinging 3D printers here. No PhDs required, but we do have people with PhDs, and that's the key part. So I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna, all right, all right. So you get a little, okay, breakage. Breakage has occurred. Okay, now let's look at the breakage. This is important. This was printed in vase mode with a 0.4 nozzle at 0.6 extrusion width. So as you can see, we had a clean break right down the side there. That indicates very good layer adhesion. Now you will notice that it is breaking then. Wow, not bad. It did break along the layer lines there. So you see not 100% isotropic strength. You sh can't expect that kind of thing with FDM right now with most materials. There are some materials that actually are stronger in the Z, but we'll get to that later. Um, and then when I broke off the other half, it looks like uh, it broke straight down the layer lines too. That's actually really, really good. So uh, next step, let's light this thing on fire. I'm gonna hold this here for 10 seconds, give it direct flame after I turn on my Bofa fume extractor. We have these on the site available. Very good if you're worried about fumes of any kind, better safe than starry, right? All the testing is still out, but we do know that fumes of plastic are usually not the greatest. I'm just gonna position this hose right here to catch all those fumes. And I'm gonna give it a good 10 second burn. Let's see what happens. All right, that was like 12 seconds, that's okay. It did not light on fire, it did not catch fire, it immediately went out and it immediately stopped fuming. Very interesting, it's still kind of soft. <laughs> all right, all right. Let's do it again over here. Let's get some full both sides, see if we can get this thing to light on fire. Two, three, four, five, six. So it shouldn't drip either with that FST rating, right? Okay, okay, it already went out. It droops, it did not drip, and it has gone out. Seems like it's still maintaining its properties too. It's still very stiff on the other side. This side is still a little bit soft as it cools. Wow, all right, yeah. So that's one of the things about the UL94 FST rating of V0. It is not going to catch on fire, it will self-extinguish, and it's gonna have very low off-gassing, and it also won't drip and things like that. So if you get it caught on fire, uh, this is a, one of the safer plastics to have around. All right, so I'm just gonna turn off the Bofa Print Pro 2 here, available on our website. We do sell all of these materials, along with a lot of other high temp performance functional plastics for 3D printing, and that's all we do here at Vision Miner. So be sure to check out our other videos for more comparisons and the full gamut of materials, and let us know what you want us to do in the comments below. We love hearing from you guys, and we're here to get you the info that you need to make the proper decision in your 3D printing experience. With that, thanks for watching this video. We'll see you on the next one. Have a positive rest of your day.